for watching Nursing School Explained. Today's topic is pleural effusion. So let's look at how this happens. So remember that normally we have about 5 to 15 milliliters of lubricating fluid between the visceral and the parietal pleura. So these are the different layers that surround the lungs that allow for expansion um, of the chest and the lungs with inhalation and exhalation so that there is no, there, there is no rubbing um, against those two cavities and everything happens smoothly. So that's just like oil in a car allows for lubrication and smooth movement. Now an effusion basically means an increased fluid in that space. And an effusion can apply to anything. For example, you can have a joint effusion in your knee if you have an injury and that fluid escapes the joint capsule. So an effusion is always a, an abnormally high amount of fluid in a specific place where it doesn't belong. And so a pleural effusion means an abnormal amount of fluid in the pleural cavity. So normally the the way that this fluid is regulated is a nice balance of hydrostatic pressure, oncotic pressure, as well as capillary membrane permeability. So what that means is the hydrostatic pressure, remember, is the pressure that's exerted against the blood vessels by a fluid, as well as the oncotic pressure, which helps um, to draw fluid into the blood vessels. And that's usually done with the help of um, plasma proteins such as albumin and then capillary membrane permeability basically meaning <clears throat> how likely is the capillary bed to let things seep through this the, the membrane and regulate the fluid that way. So now when this regulation is out of balance then we'll have a pleural effusion. So this abnormal Regulation usually happens because of increased pulmonary capillary pressure, decreased oncotic pressure, or increased pulmonary uh, pleural membrane permeability or obstruction of lymphatic flow. That can be another reason. And pleural effusions, there are two different types. One of them is exudative and the other one is transudative. So exudative, think, think about exudate as in pus. Um, and that usually is because of inflammation. So some sort of inflammation is happening, which makes all the inflammatory cells attracted to that site and increases the uh, pleural cavity uh, permeability. And that is usually because of infection or malignancy. Um, and that fluid is then usually cloudy and yellow, thick, kind of pus looking, exudative type of fluid where in transudative pleural effusion, those are non-inflammatory conditions that cause that. And so when the hydrostatic pressure increases, the blood pressure increases, the heart works, hard, um, work, the heart works harder, it causes heart failure, and therefore all that fluid is um, backing up into the lungs, causing the pleural effusion as well as if when we have decreased oncotic pressure, so decreased blood albumin, usually because of liver and renal disorders, we will have transudative pleural effusions, and that fluid is usually clear and very pale yellow, not so inflamed, infected looking as in the exudative. And that's just kind of a background so that you understand how these mechanisms happen. And mostly, the most common um, causes for pleural effusions that I've seen in my practice was heart failure, liver failure, <clears throat> as well as um, malignancy. So tumors can cause that.